it's Eileen Martin again. Uh, let's take a look at some of the basics of actually starting to contribute to DAS Core, which is going to include being able to move around between different branches, being able to run the testing environment, and also being able to run the pre-commit hooks after you've made a little change. So let's take a look at our contributing page again. So we've already gone through all the instructions to install this in development mode. Um, and we've got our pre-commit hook set up. So let's go back to our contributing page and let's take a look at our testing. All right, so we're gonna use PyTest, which is a, a way of sort of managing all of our test cases, make sure that everything still works. And um, let's go ahead and try this out. We're gonna first go with just the basic PyTest test, and then we're gonna check coverage using these other flags. First, I've got to activate my Conda environment. Hi, test, test. Right now, I'm just sitting in my main directory. I haven't actually moved back into my uh, DAS core directory. So it couldn't find my test directory. So whenever we're actually running our test, we want to be in this directory. Just to be a user of DAS Core, of course, you don't have to be in this directory. But when you're running your tests, that's where you want to be. So let's try again. So it's running the test now. It also tells us what percentage of the way done we are here. So as we start to have more tests, if it takes longer, you'll be able to tell what's going on. All right, so the other thing that we can do is we can use the cov flags to check our coverage. And then one other thing is if we list what's in our test subdirectory, you see that we've got uh, test client, test core, test proc, test IO, test utils, test transform, test viz. So we're able to see like all these different subsets of our tests. And as you start to write new tests and add to this, you're gonna be adding to them within these sort of um, subsets. So let's go ahead and if we just wanna do the test IO. And if we look at uh, what's inside of that test slash test IO structure, just to get a feel for what's in there, We've got some stuff for, we've got a general indexer, um, we've got test IO core, and then we've also got stuff for various uh, types of file formats. So we've got our general DAS day format, we've got a pickle format, a TDMS format, Terra 15 format, and a wave format there. And so if you add a particular type of uh, data format to DAS, DAS core, then you want to actually also be adding into these uh, test structures in the same way. So we've seen how to run our test cases, um, but while you're actually developing new code, you want to actually work on different branches. And if you're also like maybe reviewing someone else's code, you're going to need to be able to check out their branch of the code. So we've got our master branch that let's say if it was just you only working on code as an individual person that only you were using, maybe you would always work with just the master branch, but we're working as a big team. And so it's really important for us to maintain these other branches while we develop new code so that we don't actually merge those branches into our main branch until we're sure that they're actually passing tests and they're working. Um, so if you're not familiar with branches, go back to the first video and check out that open source course.dev material and check out the Oh My Get game so you can get familiar with those concepts first. But in practice, let's go ahead and just look at what branches do we have available to us? How do we check one out? Let's look at this in the context of the DAS core project. If I wanna just see what branches do I even have available to me, I'm gonna say, I'm inside the DAS core folder and I'm gonna say git branch dash A. All right, so I can see multiple different branches. So right now we've got, you see master branch, and then we've also got our head. Um, we've got several different ones. We've got stuff on API documentations. Uh, one of them that I know is going on is uh, Derek is working on API docs. So first, 
let's take a look uh, at what our current master branch looks like. So you see how there's an asterisk next to master. That means that right now, what I'm looking at on my computer is the master branch. So if I look at inside my doc, so you see here, I've got contributing recipes, contributors, references, um, some other things for quarter and static, some acknowledgments, index, tutorial stuff, quick start, change log, all of that. We don't see anything about an API here. Now, what we might want to do is say, get checkout remote origin API docs. And it says down here, after I've done that checkout here, it says switching to remote origin API docs. So it says you're in detached head state. You can look around, make experimental changes and commit them. And you can discard any commits you've made in this state without impacting any branches by switching back to a branch. If you want to create a new branch to retain commits you create, you may do so an hour later by using dash C and the switch command. In our docs folder again, and you see that we've got actually a longer list of stuff here, maybe. So for example, we did not on our master branch have a folder that was called filters. But now on this one, we've got a filters folder. So we can say like ls doc slash filters. Okay, and it's got this fill links.py script in there. So just an example of the stuff that's able to be um, different between different branches, you can have additional files change back. If I'm going to go back to my, or if I just want to double check what branch I'm on, if I'm not sure of which version I'm, I'm working with, I can just say git branch. I didn't make any changes. And so I can just say git checkout master, and I'll go back over there. Because I didn't make any changes, I don't need to like commit any any of those changes or anything like that because they didn't happen. All right, I don't want to mess around with the um, API docs branch since Derek's working on that. I'm not planning to make any changes to it, but one of the changes that I do want to be able to create is um, a branch that's going to focus on incorporating features needed for um, an inventory to keep track of our cables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new branch. All right, so what I've done with that command is just create the new branch called inventory. And I went ahead and switched to that branch. So I could have said git branch inventory followed by git checkout inventory, but this is just a little bit shorter. Let's say I want to make a really minor change here. All right, so we've got patch, schema, and spool here. What I'm going to want to do is actually add in this idea of an inventory. So I'm going to say I'm going to create an inventory file. And right now, we don't need to get into all the details of how that's going to be created, but we've just made some changes. We've created a new file, and we want to add that file. All right, we see what's there. It says that I haven't added inventory yet, so I'm going to say git add inventory.py. Okay, git commit. I'm going to leave a message. And notice that I've got uh, the environment for my pre-commit hook going in right there. Notice that these are automatically invoked. I'll also show you how you can run these manually if you're maybe not feeling ready to make a commit yet, but just want to check that everything is working with the pre-commit hooks. Those are useful for being able to automatically deal with uh, style and linting stuff. We've still got more work to do on this branch, um, but hopefully that was helpful. If you wanted to force yourself to run the pre-commit hooks before actually doing the commit, and this is all uh, documented on the contributing style and linting page on dascore.org. 
we should get exactly the same results this time. We haven't changed anything. So now we've seen uh, how to actually run the testing environment. We've seen how to check out a branch, how to move around between branches, how to create a branch, how to make some minor change to the code, how to run our pre-commit hooks in two different ways, both automatically invoked while putting in a commit and how to manually do them before you might do a commit.